my name is Mario Zaller. I work for Thomas Hilfen for 14 years now and I'm a nurse and work in sales and as a freelancer for the Nursing Institute EGAP um, for nursing research and applied nursing science. I want to give you an impression about the issue sleep today and we will go through um, the healthy sleep, sleeping problems and some nursing care measurements that nurses can use if they got patients or residents who don't sleep very well. Here you see the good night's sleep and the average amount of sleep a person should get is about seven hours. It's a continuous change of activity and rest. Our body repairs itself, recharge cells are replaced. We recharge spent energy. Um, this helps us to um, strengthen, uh, to stronger, no, <laughs> sorry. Uh, this helps us uh, to not do the same mistake twice. Um, our body seals itself off from the external surroundings and it's completely busy repairing itself. It cannot produce any external output. Our immune system is strengthened and nutri nutrients are digested. Ideas learned during the day are consolidated. Our body uses as much calories as during the daytime. Um, there is a big sleeping researcher in a <laughs> sleep researcher in Germany. Uh, he's called Professor Zulai, and he pinpoints the problems of getting too little sleep here. Um, too little sleep makes sick, it shortens life, and makes people stupid. Our internal clocks tells us when it's time to sleep. It also sets the pace for the daytime structure. Our concentration is best in the periods in between. In the morning between 10 and 12 o'clock, in the afternoon around 3 o'clock, and in the evening at TV prime time. Depending on what type you are, lark or owl, our day or night person, these phases take place earlier or later. Every person experiences these three fit phases. The brain is not limited to one state, neither during sleep nor in a wake state. It needs changes between concentration and relaxation. Around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, our body shuts down. We experience this dip in energy after lunch. So you shouldn't watch this video after lunch, please. The absolute performance low, however, takes place at night between 3 and 4 o'clock. If we are awake during this time, perception is distorted, concentration is low, and we don't feel very well. Uh, the person is ex extremely unstable and functions quite ineffectively. It's called the darkest hour. <clears throat> Sleep is comprised of different phases of rest and activity, as we said. If it resembles an up and downhill ride and is not a consistent um, state of rest. Sleep is not passive, it's highly active. The activity of brain during sleep can be recorded by monitoring in sleep laboratories. The EEG, the electroencephalographic uh, record, uh, records the impulse of different intents transferred from nerve cells to the brain. By the way, modern sleep science started just in the beginning of the last century, at about 1929 with developing of EEG recordings. Um, our sleep is divided into different phases. Light sleep, light, light sleep, light deep sleep, deep sleep and the REM sleep, which is the time of dreaming. A night has two to three deep sleep phases within the first half of the night. They are interrupted by four to five dream sleep phases recurring every 90 minutes and lasting even longer in the course of the night. Towards morning only light sleep takes place between the dream phases 
we wake up very easily and we have uh, sometimes very strange dreams at that time. A healthy person goes through four to six such cycles, depending on sleep duration, each lasting approximately 90 minutes. The depth of sleep alternates like an up and downhill ride like a roller coaster. Deep sleep changes to lighter sleep and then to dream sleep and then back again to deep sleep. Uh, in the deep sleep phases, um, with increasing the depth of sleep, the numbers of movements decrease. Heart and pulse rate seeks gradually to approximately 5 T beats per minute. The blood pressure decreases as well. The muscle tension drops considerably. During dream sleep, muscle tension is lowest. It's a complete paralyze of our body. This prevents that our dreamt movements are really carried out, which is very healthy for your neighbor in the bed. The body temperature decreases uh, by approximately uh, 0 0.5 degrees Celsius, normally being lowest in the early morning. It then increases again slowly. In the first half of the night, meaning the first two to three sleep cycles, we spend more time in deep sleep and dream. Deep sleep makes a share of approximately 20% of the total sleep duration. At about age 40 already, the share of deep sleep declines. About age 60, deep sleep is normally absent. The sleep scientists largely agree that deep sleep is functionally the most important recovery phase of our body. After sleep deprivation, missed deep sleep is the first to be made up for. Deep sleep is the most important part of sleep and provides above all physical recreation. That's why after the age of 40 the wrinkles increase. You have two uh, very poor deep sleep phases. During the light sleep phase the person can easily wake up. Waking up at night is absolutely normal. Most of the time we don't remember it. Can you guess how often you wake up at night? Now, make a rough guess. Okay. It's approximately 28 times a night without remembering it later on. As long as we are alive, our brain and all our organs are active without pausing. During sleep, nerve cells work a little slower, producing more electrical voltage. When awake, they, first, they work faster at lower voltage. But even when we are awake, our brain is not always in top form. At times we are highly concentrated and at times our thoughts are zooming out, as you know. So be concentrated during the rest. The brain needs this change and our internal clock makes sure for it to happen. And um, it inserts these breaks. Around 1 o'clock in the afternoon we have our afternoon slump. We barely can concentrate and many people would like to take a nap. At 9 o'clock in the morning and at 5 o'clock in the afternoon we experience a similar slump, only less pronounced. Growth hormones are released in the first half of the night. They are responsible for the construction of cells like growth regeneration. Parallel to the growth hormone, transmitters are released. They are involved in immune reaction. <clears throat> During the light sleep in the second half of the night, our organism slowly prepares for waking up. Body movements increase. The person can wake up easier. Body temperature increases slowly and the stress hormone cortisol is released increasingly. Um, the hormone cortisol provides energy and makes us wide awake and really alert. Uh, it elevates the blood sugar level, minimizes the protein conversion and impedes the immune system. Um, it prepares the organism to be properly awake in the morning, which does not always work properly with all persons. 
um, concentration of cortisol is highest when getting up in the morning. It only increases further in stress situations. It then does, to, does not make the person awake, but wide awake. In the evening, cortisol is retarded by release of growth hormones and melatonin, which is the sleeping hormone. If a person doesn't sleep long enough, the cortisol, cortisol level is continuously too high. This results in permanent mental stress. And if sleep deprivation lasts for a longer time, the blood sugar level grows and the person gains weight continuously. As you might remember, I said uh, too, uh, very poor sleep makes you fat. So this is a problem of the cortisol level. Um, the most exciting phase of sleep is the REM sleep. It, it says rapid eye movement. In the second half of the night, the deep sleep phases cease almost completely. Duration and intensity of dream phases increase. When we dream at the beginning of the night, the phases last 10 to 20 minutes. Towards morning, they last up to 45 minutes. Um, the abbreviation REM comes, as I said, from the rapid eye movement and describes the fast eye movement, typically for the sleep stage. It's assumed that the eyes move that quickly because they follow these quickly changing dream visions we have. Our dreams are very intense then. Thus, in the most active, it's the most active part of the sleep. We dream in other sleep stages too, but rarely remember these dreams. Typically, for dream sleep, is the active brain function. Heartbeat, blood pressure and respiration are faster and irregular. The muscle tension is extremely low. Uh, as I said, it uh, prevents you from carrying out uh, the movements you dream. <coughs> It's really a sort of a paralyzation. There are some people who wake up at night and still feel paralyzed. Um, this sometimes happens, especially with younger people. Um, we don't really know what happens during the dream phases, but we assume uh, that they have an information processing function. Experiences and impressions uh, are processed, learned issues saved, and needless information is deleted. REM sleep is vital for mental emotional recreation. Cleaning up, sorting, restoring, reorganizing our experiences, learn topics are saved and emotional impressions are cleared up. Um, our brain creates space for new perceptions and experiences. Um, the physician and psychoanalyst analyzes uh, Sigmund Freud already described many interesting dream theories in his work The Imp Interpretation of Dreams. Even nowadays they are subject of some intense discussions. Dream sleep makes a share of around 20% of the total sleep duration. Babies dream approximately half of their sleep duration by reaching poverty, dream sleep has decreased to around 25% and remains more or less constant up to an advanced age. When we have bad dreams or nightmares, we awake from them and clearly remember them. Nightmares occur towards morning when dream phases are very long. People dream frightening scenes and sometimes you dream that you can't run away. This is due to your body paralysis, as we spoke uh, about before. Um, out this fear in their dreams, people wake up. Sleep scientists attribute nightmares to mental causes. Stress and burdening circumstances of life are considered the key triggers. Nightmares in adult people mostly have their causes in mental problems or they react on extremely encumbering experiences, such as rape, murder or natural disasters. Children who suffer from nightmares often, often react on situations in movies they have watched. Having nightmares from time to time is no reason to worry. If they occur regularly, perhaps every night, medical advice should be consulted. Often suppressed, unsolved conflicts are triggers. Very stressful and burdening alterations, uh, situations
promote nightmares. A vicious circle starts. Our concentration and performance required so badly in this situation decrease because we do not get urgently needed rest of at night. Nightmares can also occur following alcohol or medication withdrawal, like antidepressants, uh, neuroleptics, sedatives or sleeping pills. Substances of these medications suppress dream sleep and when you withdraw them, um, the, the REM phases decrease extremely, increase extremely, I'm sorry. Um, nightly anxiety, it's called pavor nocturnus, um, can easily be mixed up with nightmares. It's assumed the cause is not all brain areas mature at the same speed, since children and teenagers are mainly affected. They wake up directly out of deep sleep at the beginning of the night, screaming, drenched in sweat and with racing heartbeat. They, cannot only, uh, they can only fragmentarily remember this the next morning or they even forgot it at all. I think it's more scary for the parents than it's for the child itself. Um, our mobility during sleep. Um, in order to fall asleep, we need to relax completely. Um, once we fell asleep, we barely move. From time to time, we turn at night to change contact pressure or we stretch an arm or leg out of the blanket to regulate our body temperature. Mostly we do this prior or following a dream sleep phase. During the dream sleep, as we said, we cannot move completely, we are virtually paralyzed. Also in deep sleep, we barely move at all. The muscle tension is very low and the body regulates pressure only time by time with micro uh, ceased motions. Numerously changing position at night saves us from developing pressure sores. That is why persons with limited mobility due to illness or age are regularly repositioned to prevent these dreaded pressure ulcers, decubitus. We change body position 20 to 60 times at night. Um, whereas our internal clock induces a part of the position changes, namely those shortly before and after dream phases or when we wake up. Um, we don't realize it, we just turn over. Um, but it's not always a big movement, it can also be micro movements as well. Um, sorry. Sleeping problems. Um, a lot of people suffer from sleeping problems. Um, there are some exterior causes, environmental causes. If it's too noisy, too warm, too cold, too much light, um, or the lacking of possibility to take our uh, preferred sleeping position. Um, noise is always a problem. Um, you easily wake up from a really little noise uh, that you are not used to. But uh, if you uh, live next to a railway or something, you won't wake up from this noise because you're used to it. But um, if the water tub drops, you will wake up. Uh, temperature is always a problem with the sleeping quality. If it's too cold, you can't fall asleep. If it's too hot, uh, you don't sleep through the night. Um, so um, a medium uh, temperature would be very convenient. Light inf influences our internal clock. When it's dark, we want to sleep and rest. Like in winter time, you go to bed e uh, earlier, and uh, no person should be uh, supposed, no person supposed to sleep should be exposed to permanent light at night. Uh, no, ch no child and uh, no adult person. Even smaller light sources can have a negative influence on your sleeping quality. The sleeping position is very important because every person has a preferred sleeping position. <clears throat> to sleep sitting upright is never as comfortable as lying down to sleep. Most persons prefer sleeping sideways and are not able to fall asleep or falling back to sleep easily after waking up face in another position. A wrong or unfamiliar position changes uh, the sleep phases and the body cannot relax to recover. 
A very big issue on sleep quality is pain. Um, pain caused by illness or inflammation is always worse at night than in daytime. Thus, pain therapy is, uh, uh, is of a higher importance at night than during our daytime. Our body looks inside at night, pain perception is sharpened. However, some types of pain decrease at night, such as wound pain or pressure pain. That makes people sleep in positions that they would, co would cause pain during the day. If the princess, if the princess and the pea would have had a good night's sleep, she would not have sensed the pea. Uh, in all age, old age, um, our sleep alters. In advanced age, sleep becomes lighter. We don't have that much deep sleep phases, as we said, uh, and even quiet sounds may interrupt sleep or prevent to fall asleep again. The total sleep duration in 24 hours barely changes in advanced age, since several naps are taken during the daytime. Uh, if you go a patient suffering from dementia, even in an early stage, waking up phases at night increase and the share of deep sleep decreases. As a consequence, the dream sleep phases also decrease. Alteration in sleep patterns uh, runs parallel to the progression of dementia. 10% of persons with dementia sleep more during the daytime than at night. That, this is that called day and night reversal. I think it's not a very high percentage, but if you got a person suffering from that, it's quite hard to take care of him. Um, with neurological diseases in total, um, we have um, several sleeping problems too. You need more time to, to fall asleep. Um, you get a, t a shorter sleep duration in total. Fragmented sleep with frequent waking up phases more light sleep than deep sleep and generally, generally less relaxation phases during the sleep. Reduction of micro-emotions, especially with Parkinson's, we have a big um, lack of uh, micro-emotions. Um, if we deal with sleeping problems, um, already Florence Nightingale, um, she did not only emphasize the support of appropriate sleep, already in, in 1859, but she describes um, the preservation of deep sleep as essential prerequisite for good nursing care. She considered sleep among the top priorities in health care. Nowadays, it can often be noticed that especially in clinics and hospitals and here primarily in intensive care units, this priority has been forgotten. A caregiver cannot influence all areas of sleep. However, they can create conditions to provide the residents with the best possible sleep. Um, one big issue is the sleep biography. Um, we have first of all to differentiate if it's a day or night person. As we said, is it a lark or an owl? Um, we have to uh, look what the resident did before, what he did at home. Was there was it light in the room, bright light, or was it completely dark? Um, should the door be open or closed? Um, should the bedding be heavy or light? The pillow, thin, thick, soft, firm? Um, how, what did the person um, do? What kind of coping strategies did he develop during his lifetime if he couldn't fall asleep or suffered from insomnia? Um, the individual sleep position is very, very important to provide for the nurse. Um, perhaps we have to involve families or if possible we do the sleep biography um, before complete nursing care is required. And, um, we have to um, consider the sleep rituals every person has got. You have got a sleeping ritual, your children, and every old person as well. What can we do to support sleep? Um, we can structure the daily routine, activities, evening walks. Um, we have evening and sleep rituals. We shorten the afternoon nap. 
The afternoon nap should be at maximum half an hour. Um, maybe we have to delay the bedtime, especially if we uh, take care for an owl. Um, you can't bring them to bed at 8 o'clock at night. Um, a cuddle blanket, a familiar pillow, a cuddle toy, these are all uh, very effective things, especially uh, caring of uh, people with dementia. We have to sort out the room temperature and the lightning. Um, we have to assess uh, is a single or a double room required. Here also people with dementia, they prefer uh, the double room because they hear someone breathing, so they feel more safe and more comfortable. Um, should we have presence of staff offering assistance, um, we shouldn't um, really talk to the person about his sleeping problems um, like in a nagging way, but we have to give them support. Uh, investigation of courses for restlessness at night, gathering and trying ideas. Uh, maybe we have to offer a late night snack like milk and bananas because of the protein and serotonin. Uh, we need this um, to produce melatonin, so it's a very good um, provision for good sleep. Um, maybe we find some alternatives to sleep medication like a warm chest pad or body washing, um, different oils. Um, I think we can um, offer tea like hop, lavender, valerian. There are a lot of natural remedies which are very good for a good night's sleep. Um, maybe we can um, put the sleep tea as part of uh, the sleeping ritual. Um, which would be quite nice for the resident as well. Um, we need to offer individual sleep position, even with immobile persons, and we absolutely have to take care for the appropriate mattress. How do we, sorry, how do we, um, how do we select the appropriate mattress? Um, mattress in particular can, be, uh, can make a significant difference. Unsuitable mattresses often cause pain or worsen existing pain. A good bed allows natural movements during sleep without any problems. It doesn't force movements because of its discomfort, uh, what you experience in some hotels or hospitals most of the time, but it allows movements without causing problems and without affecting sleep. In order to achieve this, the person should not sink into the mattress too much, like the super soft mattress, as you can see here. If it's too soft, um, water beds sometimes, or these super soft foam mattresses, you will lose your body perception completely. Um, the viscoelastic foam mattresses, um, it's very hard uh, to turn over for the patient. Um, and they offer a very poor bed climate. And last but not least, the alternating pressure systems. They are too noisy, the pumps are too noisy, and they offer little lying comfort and a really poor bed climate. As you see here, we got an MIS microstimulation system. Um, we use them for people, uh, especially for people with reduced mobility. We support the micro motions from the underframe and th thus promote deep sleep. The efficiency of these MIS systems is due to the combination of the soft mattress uh, on top and the underframe underneath. Um, this reacts to the natural micro movements and returns it to the person's body. That's what microstimulation says. The patient lies soft and yet dynamic. Micromotions are supported and body perception is preserved. The lying position is ergonomically correct, which prevents pain as well. This makes the MIS stimulation system suitable not only for pressure ulcer prevention and treatment, but also for persons with dementia, neurological diseases or pain. They offer an optimal support and the basis for healthy sleep of the residents. 
Here you see a bigger picture of the underframe and the wings um, that react to your own body movements um, to give it back uh, to your body. Well, if you have a better quality of sleep, um, above all restorative sleep, um, it shows improvements in their daily form. It improves the day's form, uh, improved outcome for the therapeutic process. You need less time for, uh, the caregiver needs less time for nursing care measurements because uh, people are more cooperative. Fixations might not be needed anymore because the person with dementia sleeps properly and they are less vulnerable to other diseases because their immune system is properly intact. So, finally we can say, as you make your bed, so you must lie on it. And if you need any further information, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you for your attendance. Bye.